Good start from Stig, ladies and gentlemen. Stig's forgot how to start the car. My name's Scott. Welcome to the crew. We're here at Chertsey Driving Test Centre. Like on the video will help me out tremendously. And let's go! I still haven't had my coffee, but I'll do my best to keep the energy levels up and give you all the advice, tips and tricks that you need to know to pass your driving test first time. Obviously, a bit of chivalry is nice stopping there to allow the lady to cross the road. But more importantly, do your observations. So we're going to get serious now, guys. Do your observations. It's very, very difficult. If you have checked out the other videos that we've done for Chertsey, all other mock test videos, and just check the playlist out if you want to see more from Chile Pass. And there's lots of more advice for other test centers and driving in general. Now we've got a nice long, sort of smoothish, reasonably, yeah, long smooth corner, but this does impair the visibility due to the bend of the road. If you have parked vehicles, take your time, try to look under or over through these vehicles to see what's coming up. And now we're at the roundabout, we're doing a second exit, turning right, mirror signal right, interior mirror, right mirror, signal right, roughly 10 to 5 car lengths from junction, nice and slow on the entry. So we're doing roughly a jogging speed, about two car lengths away from the junction to a walking speed. If you can't see, we'd call this a closed junction due to obstructions. You want to come to a slow stop, observe, and then go. If you've got an open junction, it might be safe to just stay in second gear or keep the speed at jogging speed. And keep going. Roundabout turning right, we've mentioned this one before, we're going to be turning right, it's the second exit, one we've passed here, two is this next one, the main one that takes you into what's labelled as Waybridge and Town Centre. Now we're going straight this time, so very, very important that you know if you're going to be going straight after you've completed this roundabout, you must use this lane. If we are in the left only lane, as you can see from the footage here, left only arrow and left only lane then you're going to church to town center now these these situations do come up a lot on the driving test and this is where the student or candidate will actually come into an anxiety level panic state now and think i've got to go straight because the examiner asked me to go straight but that's incorrect if you're in a left only lane you must obey the road markings you must go left you will pass your driving test regardless of the examiner giving you directions to go straight because you have obeyed the road markings you've shown the examiner you're observing we're all humans we all may end up in the wrong lane at a certain time but if we're responsible drivers we see the road markings, we follow the road markings, we're safe drivers, and that's what the examiners want, safe drivers on the road. We're going straight, second exit, there's only one lane on this roundabout, take your time like we mentioned earlier, it's the approaching speed, it's the most important part about roundabouts, so that you're coming in roughly at a jogging speed to a walking speed if the junction is closed. If it's an open junction, you can keep the jogging speed, second gear as an example, if you're still back in the stone ages and driving a manual car, then this will be an appropriate gear to approach junctions in. If you're at a closed junction, you want to slow down and go into gear one. Okay, we're going straight to this roundabout, second exit. And look at the, wheel, uh, the wheels on the vehicles on the right. So Stiggy's looking at the wheels there. You can see even the van put on a left signal, which is an, uh, another way of telling where a vehicle's going. But I would try to encourage you to look at the wheels as a more of a guarantee of telling where a vehicle is about to go next. As sometimes people might miss calculate their signal, uh, you know, or put the wrong signal on. So the wheels are a much better way of being sure that a vehicle is definitely going wherever the wheels are pointing, okay? Uh, we're coming towards the junction a bit further down the road. It's quite a long road with parked vehicles putting us out over the center line. That's okay because we must maintain a meter or door width from the vehicles if it's safe to do so, which it is. We're turning right. Now, at this traffic light, can you see there's two lanes turning right? And it's very important if you're turning right and there's two lanes, 
that you use this lane. Now, the only reason why you would use, and we actually did use that right lane on uh, the first video at Chertsey, is because we were going right and we were overtaking. So a reason for using the right lane would be for overtaking. Another reason would be if you're going to turn right again after this initial turn. So a right into the right lane, turning right again. Two good reasons for using the right lane. Now, if you're just going to turn the right one time you use this left lane and this is actually going to lead us up to where we're going after which will be left so you can see we've done our lane discipline here we've kept our left lane as we followed it through to turn right now we're still in the left lane so good lane discipline and we're following this lane which is going to take us up towards where the examiner is going to ask us to go next okay so we've used the correct lane this is positioning as it's called on the dv the DL or the DVL 25? No, 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 the, the test sheet. Anyways, the test report, okay, it's called positioning normal driving. Very important, a lot of people fail for this. Okay, so we've got this little slip road to the roundabout, but we do have a set of giveaway lines here. So although this, this little left that we've done on the roundabout had its own little potential VIP slip road, you saw the giveaway lines shortly after. So you've seen the road markings. We talked about road markings before with the left only arrow. You've seen those. You know that you need to give way. So you stop, you do the observations. Remember that's number one reason why people fail the driving test. So you come down a road like this to do your maneuver. We're not gonna be doing maneuvers on these routes we're just showing you the routes keep them nice and short lots of information so that you're learning lots and it's not too stretched out or too much fluff in between if you want to go and check out the maneuvers again nice little plug for the playlist so you can just go and check out the playlist and you will see the maneuver section you can go and look and learn how to do your reverse parking etc 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 back at the roundabout we're taking the first exit turning left so we would have completed our maneuver coming back out to the roundabout to go back round towards the test center so we're taking the first exit here very busy roundabout we're at the giveaway lines. We're just observing to the right. So what we want to see is a nice, big, healthy gap to the right where you would walk out into the road. And if it's safe enough for you to walk out, it's safe enough for you to drive out. So this is the best way for you to know when you have an opportunity to drive out at the junction. Would I walk out? Okay, so on a 40 mile an hour road, we don't have a lot of room. We've got oncoming vehicles like that lorry, and we've got this cycle here on the left. Now if you do have extra room like we have now, we give the cyclist as much room as it's safe to do so, at least a metre. You can give a bit more than that, which is, is probably going to be encouraged in the future. I've heard rumours about um, the highway code being adjusted for cyclists, and it definitely looks like something along those lines will happen in the future. So do your best to give as much room when you're overtaking the cyclist. As Stig did, he waited until the oncoming traffic had gone. There was a big gap between the bicycle, nice safe gap there for Stig to go ahead, no oncoming traffic. Use the opportunity, accelerate, get past the cyclist as quickly and as safely as possible, like you'd like to do whenever you're overtaking, regardless of it being a cyclist or any other vehicle. We're turning right on the roundabout. This will be the third exit. Uh, this looks very familiar, this roundabout. Almost looks like a roundabout at Southall. Isleworth. Interesting. It's not because we're pretty far from there. Okay, so exit one, exit two. Now we check our interior left mirror and we signal left as we pass exit two to show everybody we're about to take exit three. Okay, we're going to go straight ahead at the roundabout, which is the second exit. It's signposted here, Adelstone. Okay, so we're going straight, second exit on the roundabout. I love my cars. So looking at that brand new 21 plate there, very nice BMW. I thought that was an M4. It's not. Okay, we're going straight. No signal necessary. So if you hear your examiner say straight ahead, that means you need to signal straight ahead. You may laugh at this. I know I did. But how many signals are there, Stick? One, two, or three? Three. It's three. <laughs> <laughs> left, right, and straight. There's really only two, isn't left there? And right. Left and right. Okay, um, but if you want to think of it as three, that's completely fine. And if you hear examiners say left, you must signal left. 
you hear examiner say right, you must signal right. If you hear your examiner signal, say go straight, yeah, no, you back, you, no signal. Okay, so uh, we've got a zebra crossing here. Look at the beacons. Nice big LEDs around those old school beacons there, which are the yellow balls. This symbolizes a pedestrian crossing. We've got our zebra poles there, black and white, and you can see that from a distance, like the traffic lights. Any warning signs on poles? These are designed to try and give us an advance warning of any any junctions or any hazards that are coming up. So use those. Really strongly suggest you do that straight on the roundabout as I did not do this when I was learning to become a driving instructor. I did not look at signs. I literally just looked at the road in front of me like most people do and I'm completely got the blinkers on here and not seeing the speed signs. So a lot of my mock tests is a keep clear zone here so we just have to stop a bit early so we're not blocking this keep clear zone i did mention that if markings are faint like that very faint so if you want to rewind you can have a look at and see how faint the keep clear zone was if it was a rainy day they would be invisible now if the road markings are invisible and you can't see them you almost need to know that they're there so that you can actually plan early and not get caught out and stop on top of these road markings which are really invisible it's not fair to you guys i know but the highway code is the highway code keep clear means keep clear and if we stop on top of them regardless of it being very visible or not it's still you top stopping on top of a keep clear zone so give yourself that little extra in your lessons do that little bit extra time with a more professional instructor or somebody that really knows what they're doing and, and they can give you that assistance or just check out videos like this there's plenty of people on youtube lots of people giving good advice so you know what you need to do and it gives you the best chance of passing your driving test so a bit further back i was talking about me not actually seeing the signs and that was something that I was doing on my driving, my drive, my mock test, as an example. And at the end of the mock test, I'd be like, well, you were doing 35 miles an hour in a 30. And I'd be like, well, it's a dual carriageway. Well, what's going on? Well, look at the sign. You see the sign. It's actually 30 miles an hour, regardless of it being a dual carriageway. So really, I hope you learn from my mistakes. Right, we're going straight across. This is a crossroads. Pretty standard here. We do have a bicycle lane here on the left. Now, a lot of times people actually drive in these bicycle lanes and look at this. So we've got two cyclists. We've made sure that we've left enough room here for the cyclists. So we're not obstructing them because if we are obstructing the cyclist in a cycle lane where there's a solid line and the solid lines, you must not cross them unless you must absolutely cross them because you can't go any other way around it. You've got to keep that clear. If we obstruct the cyclists, it can be a serious fall for making cyclists slow stop and swerve. Anybody that's a road user, it doesn't matter if you're on a bicycle, a motorbike, a scooter, or whatever, you're all classed as the same. So sometimes people get quite upset about you know people walking out on the road or a cyclist or something along these lines. But we must take the responsibility. We're the one driving this car. Yes, there's a hazard, but what would a responsible person do? Uh, oh my God, you know what? I'm boring myself right now. But this is the way that the examiners are looking at you as a driver. They must see you as a safe and responsible person. That's the person that will get their driving license. So that's the type of image you want to portray to your examiner. Okay, so we have another long road here. Good visibility. Look at that white car coming towards us. Okay, is there enough room? There's just about enough room. Now, we were using a guideline there of that white line that we were driving over because we needed to drive over. And that white line in the center of the road was actually in the center of our steering wheel. And that can be one way of knowing that you're keeping roughly one meter from the parked cars or a door width from the parked cars. Now, if there's enough room for you to keep going because the oncoming car has now seen you, which is another good reason for being out, you know, they will give you space and you can both keep going. Brilliant. Straight on the roundabout, second exit. Now, if there isn't enough space for you and the oncoming car is starting to slow down, they're starting to stop, you'll need to maybe start to slow down and stop and adjust your position. So just take it nice and gentle. Here's a good situation. So look, we've got a 40 mile hour speed limit, but we've got a big lorry coming towards us. 
We don't really want to be speeding up there. We don't know how wide the road is. We don't know if it's going to get more narrow up there. So regardless of a speed change, we're looking at a situation, we might actually start to do the opposite and slow down until we can really know what's happening and make a sound decision. This is the one bit of advice that I actually got from, from my mum, in fact, right? Her driving instructor said to her, when in doubt, don't. And I hope that is self-explained. So let's take this as a situation. So are we in any doubt if it's safe to go around this lorry? No. I mean, look at the road ahead. Very good visibility. Absolutely no oncoming traffic. Obviously, if you're changing directions, uh, do check your mirrors to make sure there's no oncoming traffic. Now take this as a situation. We've got the two cyclists. And are we in any doubt now? So I would say yes. I can't really see. Is that car going to pull out from the side road? I can't see around the bend. It's also a hill, so it drops off, which is going to obscure our visibility ahead. So I'm in a lot of doubt now. I'm checking my mirrors, signaling to go around the cyclist. Am I in any doubt? Nah, a little bit, because the lorry kind of pulled out there. But that's beyond the point of us making our decisions. It's all about the point before we make the decision. How do we feel? Another way of assessing it is we all have feelings and they're there for a reason. So if you start to feel anxious or anxiety or you start to feel this kind of uneasy feeling in the pit of your stomach, why? What is the reason for that? You're obviously being told something's not right. So what you need to do is slow down, cover the brake, press the brake, start to adjust the speed of the vehicle, and you'll notice that anxiety will start to subside, and this will make you make more, better, safer decisions. At the roundabout, turn right, third exit, back towards the driving test center now. So this is quite a busy roundabout, as you can see. So we talked about that speed, that uneasy feeling. Most people feel uneasy at junctions, roundabouts especially. Start to slow down early. Make yourself feel better, that way you'll act better, okay? Mirror, mirror signal here to the left as we pass over the second exit coming towards the third to tell everybody we're going to take the next exit. And if it's safe, you spiral out towards the left lane and use the left lane the best you can. And a nice reference point for lane discipline, we talked about this in previous videos, is that white line. Now, unlike we mentioned earlier when we were over the white line and the white line was in the center of the steering wheel, when we're in our lane, the white line is just off to the right of the steering wheel, into the bottom right-hand corner of your windscreen. Now, if the lane marking, that white line that we can see now, is in the bottom right-hand corner, just like it is on the video, then that means you are central in your lane. We're coming up to a roundabout now. We're going to be going left, okay? So we're going to take the first exit turning left. If you watch Top Gear and you try to get lessons off the stig and you look to him and you ask him a question like I was just doing, there, there's no reply. We're just going to get ghosted. So I'm trying to actually assess what's happening. On the move here, guys. Give me some credit for that, please. A like on the video will help me out tremendously. Okay, we're turning left here. So mirror, mirror signal into the slip road. I mentioned this earlier, previous video. Uh, no, not previous video. On this video. But we've got, guy, uh, we've got our giveaway lines there. So um, you know that you need to give way. So just keep looking out for them. I know sometimes they're faint, but hey-ho, what can you do? All right, guys. Well, we're back at the test center. Thanks. A like on the video, like I said, will help me out tremendously. I've been Scott. Stay safe, stay tuned, and I'll see you next time.